Hi, it's Dwyer, keeping it free.blogspot.com. You know, I made a video earlier on the Trayvon Martin tragedy. A uh, young African American teen minding his own business on his way home with a bag of Skittles and a drink a Arizona iced tea, right? He's lawfully on his way home. He's on the phone with his girlfriend. And then he gets racially profiled, stalked, and killed. And then we have the travesty of the stalker actually claiming self-defense. It's been stunning seeing the response as well as the ongoing media narrative. I encourage everyone to just do a YouTube search for that earlier video. Just Google Trayvon Dwyer on YouTube and you'll pull up the video. And somehow, rather than focus on these facts, people who seem to have a bigger agenda felt a need to comment on anything African-American, right? Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, I had one person leave a comment about race merchants and things like that. Well, all I can say is um, the people leaving those comments, and they're up on YouTube, need to ask themselves why they felt a need in a conversation about a specific victim and a specific set of facts and a specific shooting, why they felt a need to try to talk about third parties who weren't even there when the shooting took place. You know, one of the problems just in our public conversation with each other are the attempts to distract from what's actually being discussed. Let me just say, whatever issues any third party, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, whoever uh, has had in any other part of their life really has no relevance whatsoever to the facts of what took place that day. Let me also say, too, that it is a little bit stunning, the uh, spin we're getting from even popular public commentators. Uh, this is a meaningful moment in America. Rush Limbaugh actually claims that the Trayvon case, by speaking out about it, it's actually hurting the black community. As if the community would actually benefit from having its teenagers stalked and shot in this manner, right? As if there's something wrong to point out that someone has been murdered after being on their way home, minding their own business on the phone with their girlfriend with a bag of Skittles and a can of Arizona iced tea. You know, um, we've even had Geraldo Rivera, and I, I've been a fan of Geraldo. I'm just chalking this up to him having a bad day, criticizing a law-abiding teenager for wearing a hoodie. Worse yet, we've had conversations about Trayvon Martin wearing a hoodie, right, as if people who wear hoodies are easier targets to shoot and are, don't receive the same protection under the law that the rest of us do. Well, let me further point out that newspapers in Florida have really given a lot of time to the shooter's alleged defense, right? And of course, What's been striking is that first we hear the defense and we're hearing some story about the shooter 
being attacked even when we have tapes of the shooter pursuing the victim, right? Literally, you know, huffing and puffing on the tape, being told by law enforcement not to follow the victim, right? Even with that evidence, we were hearing media spin, particularly in the Florida newspapers, of this attacker's claim of self-defense. Okay, great. I'm all for the First Amendment, right? Whatever his version of the events are, great. Go ahead, report that. But what's been stunning is the fact that after tapes have surfaced that cast doubt on those events, right? In particular, there is a tape that shows the shooter after the shooting and this shooter who claimed that he had lacerations on the back of his head and a uh, broken nose uh, certainly doesn't look in need of medical attention. But what's remarkable is that even after that tape surfaced, even after there's new evidence of the voice recording of screams before the shooting that show that the person screaming was actually the victim, Trayvon Martin, right? Even with this new evidence, it's amazing how subdued media outlets have been in reporting the new evidence, right? And so um, as we hear from the Rush Limbaugh's, the Michelle Malkins, the Pat Buchanan's, and Buchanan wrote a piece where he talked about how crime is disproportionately committed by black males. The inference is that it's reasonable to attack any black male in this manner, right? My point to you is simply, as these commentators come forward and reveal their hands, all of us need to realize that they're not talking about this case. They actually have a bigger social agenda that seems to add up to fewer rights for African Americans, especially those wearing hoodies. And what's striking is that these people claim to be for the Constitution, for the American way of life. It's really striking. I think that um, all one has to do to see the bigger agendas out there is to simply read the comments left by people to videos such as this one, including the comments left to the video I left earlier on the Trayvon Martin case on YouTube, right? Again, on YouTube, just search for Dwyer Trayvon Martin. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Um, yes, even your comments will be part of the public narrative. What's instructive is simply the fact that we have an incident and yet the comments seem to be comments that don't pertain to what happened, right? They're about black people in general, black people not involved in this incident, uh, the protesters as opposed to what they're protesting. Think about that one. You know, why should I be focused on Al Sharpton or anyone else when there is an African-American here who literally, it seems to me at least, was assassinated by someone who seems to me to have believed that it was acceptable to follow African-American men around and to then call the police and claim that the man who was unarmed on his way home looked suspicious. Right? Is that acceptable 
these days in America. Let me also ask you too. Does someone talking on the phone, walking away from you, ever look suspicious? You know, I mean, think about it. Who comes to burglarize your house while they're on the phone talking to someone? You know, the, the defense is preposterous on its face. And, it, you know, also, who, who really is trying to victimize your neighborhood who, when you start to chase them, they start to run away? In other words, they're already walking away from you. You start to chase them, they start to run away, right? How many of us have encountered crooks like that? Crooks on the phone running away from you. Simply ridiculous. And um, instead of discussing a preposterous defense, we're talking about um, other things, right? The identity of the protesters. Absurd. Let me know what you think. I hope you leave your comments for me here online, and I hope you visit us at keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.